Philistines, and Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, uh -huh. and have not walked in my ways, to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments as I did David his father, as did David his father. So now you can see how Israel had gotten away from the Lord, and they had started worshiping all these pagan deities that the Lord said that they should not do. So now even Solomon, he had got entangled in that as well. So now the Lord had taken the thing out of Solomon's hand, and he put it, and after his son came on the scene, then he gave uh, Jeroboam ten tribes, and he gave Solomon's son Rehoboam two tribes. Skip down. We're going to save some time here. And uh, 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 skip down now to uh, 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 verse 41. Go ahead, read. And the rest of the acts of Solomon uh -huh. and all that he did and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of Acts of Solomon? Go ahead, read. And, in the, and the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. Uh -huh. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father, and Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead. So now you had the split here, and actually they became two nations. One nation took the name Judah, other nation took the name Israel. Let's go to uh, 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 Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to pick it up at verse 15. I'm going to show you. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15. So now you've got this one nation here, the Israelites. They was made up of 12 tribes. Now they have been split. But you are still dealing with the same people here. You understand what I'm saying? Even though one nation decided to keep the name Israel, the other nation took the name Judah. Nevertheless, you are still dealing with the same people. You are not dealing with different people. You are dealing with 12 brothers. Two of them decided, I'm going to take a different name. That is all that you are dealing with. Forget about this over here. You understand what I'm saying? Because these people here, they claim to be uh, Israelites as well. But forget, this ain't got nothing to do with them. This got to do with the same 12 people here. Two of them said, we, gonna say we are Israelites. The other two said, we're going to say we are Judah. That's all that it is. We'll get back to Edom later on. Now, uh, let's, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to pick it up at verse 15. Ezekiel 37, and we'll pick it up at verse 15. Okay, go ahead and read, 37 and 15. Go ahead and read, bro. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, uh -huh. Moreover, thou son of man, go ahead. take thee one stick and write it and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companion. Uh -huh. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companion. Wait, I want to put this up here, too, because this is Israel. And then sometime he go by the name, when you read in the Bible here, he go by the name of Ephraim as well. Now, uh, I just want to make sure I spell it right. E-P-H. Thank you, sir. And he even go by the name sometime of Samaria because that was the capital for the ten tribes. Samaria, okay. That was the capital for the ten tribes. So sometimes you'll find them, you know, uh, spoken of as Ephraim and sometimes even Samaria. But you are dealing with the ten tribes. And that's who you're dealing with because Samaria was the capital of the ten tribes and Jerusalem was the capital of uh, uh, A -L -E -L. So Jerusalem, now Jerusalem was the capital of, uh, of Judah. Now, what verse are we? Verse 17. Go ahead and read. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. So now you had to split, and now what, what we are reading about here is when the Lord is going to put them back together. And that's a, well, it ain't far off now. They've been split ever since 722 B.C. or 721 B.C. And, and uh, so we're talking about almost 3,000 years they've been split up. And they still have not been put back together to this very day. But what we're reading about here is when the Lord put them back together. But the reason I am reading this to you is because I want you to understand that after the split, they became two nations. Go ahead and read. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Uh -huh. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, 
Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. Uh huh. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, uh -huh. and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. So now, you know, all of them, the ten tribes, they got, they, they, the Lord had taken them out around 721 B.C. Then later on, he took Judah out, which was around 70 A.D. And they have been separated. Well, Judah, they got separated when uh, Israel got kicked out in 721 B.C. But then when Judah got kicked out, then they have not, Israel have not dwelt in the land since. So now they are separated. Go ahead and read a little bit more. What verse are we? Verse 22. Go ahead and read. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, uh -huh. and one king shall be king to them all. And there shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. So now they got divided, and they're going to be divided until the Lord returns. That's how long they're going to be divided, until the Lord returns. So now you got the two nations, Lord said, and I'm going to put them together, and they're going to become one in my hand. And at the appointed time, that is what he's going to do. He's going to put them together, and they will become one in his hand. So now you got the ten tribes here, and they got the name uh, Israel or sometime even Ephraim or even Samaria. Then you got the two tribes here, and, and then uh, the two tribes out of Judah. Another name that they are referred to as well is Jews. People say, well, you know, you got other Jews too. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. These ten here, they are not Jews even. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right, brother. If you did not come out of Judah, you are not a Jew. In order to be a Jew, the first thing is you got to be an Israelite. That's number That's right. one. You got to come out of one of them 12 tribes in order to be an Israelite. And then in order to be a Jew, you got to come out of Judah. So now if you ain't out of Judah, you're not even a Jew. You're just an Israelite, even if you're out of any of those other 10 tribes. Just to make it clear. Because I know somebody going to tell me, uh, uh, you know, these people here, they're Jews too. No, they ain't. You didn't come out of Judah, you ain't no Jew. That's right. And if you didn't come out of one of these 12, you're not even Israelite. He didn't come out of one of the 12. So he's not even Israelite. He is what he is, and that is an Edomite. Let's get it straight. Now, let's go to, uh, let's, now that we understand you got these two nations here, you understand kind of who you're reading about here. You get in there, you read, sometimes it say Ephraim, sometimes it say Israel, sometimes it say Mar Samaria. You get in there, you see Judah, and, uh, and sometimes you'll even see the term Jews. Let's go now to uh, 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 Leviticus chapter 26, and we'll begin reading at verse 14. This is what God said to the Israelites here. This is what he said to them, because what the Lord did with the Israelites is he made a covenant with them, and the covenant was that they were to obey his commandments. And if you obey these commandments, then I will bless you, and if you don't obey these commandments, then I will curse you. I will punish you if you don't. Uh, Israel agreed to that. So don't, you know, it ain't like Lord forced it on them. That's right. Lord laid it in front of them, said, you know, here are your options. You know, uh, you can, you can uh, uh, make this covenant with me and be obedient unto my commandments. Then I bring these blessings up on you. Or you can make this covenant with me and if you choose to be disobedient unto my commandments. Then I bring these curses up on you. That was the deal. That's right, brother. Israel agreed to the deal. Now, so now this is what the Lord is saying to them. This is what's going to happen to you if you don't obey the commandments. Let's start reading here at uh, Leviticus chapter 26, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Where my heat and cooling guy at? Somebody need to cool it off a little bit in here. I don't know if it's me or somebody else. Somebody need to cool it off in here. Somebody come up here and, 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 and follow me with the thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to teach, and you want me to stop and do that too. Leviticus chapter 26, we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Maybe turn the fan on a little bit or something. Uh, Leviticus chapter 26, and we'll begin reading at verse 14. 26 and 14. 
26 and 14. Okay, go ahead and read. But if you will not hearken unto me. Now, and first thing he said was, if you obey, if you obey me, then I'll do this for you and I'll do that for you. Then he turned around and said to Israel, that's who he's talking to. He ain't talking to everybody. Because you got the false prophet, they done messed up some people with that. I'm going to get to them later. Now, but he said, now, but if you will not hearken unto me, go ahead, read on. And will not do all these commandments. Uh -huh. And if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgment, so that ye will not do all my commandments, uh -huh. but that ye break my covenant, go ahead. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and a burning ague. That shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. In and other words, you know, he's he just telling them what he's going to do to them if they don't obey. We're going to skip over much of this, and we're going to just skip down here and get to the heart of it. Get to, uh, uh, skip down to verse 27. Go ahead and read on. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, uh -huh. but walk contrary unto me. Now he said, you know, he done told him, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do that to you. And if you still refuse, he said, and, and, and he said, if you still refuse to obey my commandment, then I'm going to do this to you. If you choose to run, walk contrary unto me, then I'm going to walk contrary unto you, which all sounds fair to me. Yes. Because everybody expects the Lord to bless them under any condition. Bless me, Lord, but the Lord put conditions That's on right, stuff. Brother. You need to understand about this God of the Bible. He put conditions on stuff. If you do, then I'll do. And if you don't do, then I don't do. That's right. That's fair, isn't it? Yes, sir. I, 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 I can't think of nothing fair than that. Now, he said, now, if you still choose to walk contrary unto me, I'm going to walk contrary unto you, and this is what I'm going to do. Go ahead, read on. Then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. Uh -huh. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. Go ahead, read. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, uh -huh. and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. Now, I can read you out of the Bible where yes, Israel sir. actually had to do yes, that. Yes, sir. I can take you in Kings and really show you that. We don't bother going through all that today. Go ahead, read on. Verse 30, uh -huh. and I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. Now, you know what these high places are? These are places of worship, and they were not worshiping the true and living God there. You know, they didn't set them up places that uh, the book referred to high places. You might call them churches today. But there was a place that if the places that they went to that they did not worship the true and living God. So now the Lord said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy all them things. Go ahead and read on. And I will make your cities waste. And he said, I'm going to even tap your cities too. The cities that I built. That's right. Because he was the one that built them. He is the one that gave them the money and the strength to build them. So now he said, I'm going to tear them up too. Go ahead and read on. And bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And he said, I'm going to even bring your sanctuaries Unto desolations. Go ahead, read on. And I will not smell the savor of your sweet odor. Uh huh. And I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. He's saying, I'm going to even bring the land into desolation, and your enemies there, they will be astonished when they see all of this. Go ahead, read on. And I will scatter you among the heathen, uh -huh. and will draw the sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. So now he said, I'm, I'm going to even scatter you among the nations. Now this is what he said he was going to do to Israel if they did not obey his command. He's talking to Israel here. This ain't about everybody else. This is about Israel. He said, this is what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to destroy your cities. I'm going to destroy your sanctuary, and I'm going to scatter you among the nations. Show you some other conditions that he put up on them. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know, the false prophets, they like to go here now. But the only thing when they go there, only thing they're going to read is a few blessings because they try to justify the doctrine of material gain. That's what they try to do. This is not about everybody. This is about Israel. That's who this is about. But they like to go here and pick it up. Uh, well, we're going to pick it up where they pick it up at. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we're going to begin reading. These are the same, pretty much the same condition.